Hey, welcome back. We're in 1 Samuel 18 now, verses 1 to 9. Now, when he had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Saul took him that day and would not let him go home to his father's house any more. Then Jonathan and David made a covenant, because he loved him as his own soul. And Jonathan took off the robe that was on him and gave it to David with his armor, even to his sword and his bow and his belt. So David went out wherever Saul sent him and behaved wisely, and Saul set him over the men of war, and he was accepted in the sight of all the people, and also in the sight of Saul's servants. Now it had happened as they were coming home, when David was returning from the slaughter of the Philistine, that the women had come out of all the cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tambourines, with joy, and with musical instruments. So the women sang as they danced and said, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. Then Saul was very angry, and the saying displeased him, and he said, They have ascribed to David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed only thousands. Now what more can he have but the kingdom? So Saul eyed David from that day forward. Uh, this is grim. I mean, this is a victorious time for the nation. Why these women were ascribing to David ten thousand and to Saul, 1,000. I mean, didn't they know this could this could uh, could work out badly for David? I guess I guess Saul didn't really win too many people to his side. Saul's Saul's behavior coming up to this time has not won him many accolades. But you know, if you had slain thousands, wouldn't you be pretty pretty high heroic? But um, what's happening here? Saul should have said, "Doesn't matter. It's, just let this pass." But Saul is jealous. Saul is prideful. Saul is uh, very nervous now because he's the king. He's afraid that somebody's going to come in and maybe be king in his place. He knows that he's displeased God. He knows he's done that. Saul is in this mode of distrusting everybody, suspecting everybody, and that's not the way it should be. Uh, but we should be careful of our words. And I think the words of the women here, you know, I mean, they were very excited. This was a giant victory for the nation. I understand it. David must have been a very appealing personality. Um, but this this is going to go badly for the kingdom and for David. So this shouldn't have happened. The things we say are are often unhelpful compared to what we thought they were, and so this is going to be a big problem. It could have got David. It could have easily led to David being killed. In fact, we're going to see this now in the many uh, chapters coming right on here that Saul gets it in for David. He's ready to kill him. He tries many times to kill him. And so this, this, is, this is very unfortunate. We need to think before we speak, and God will help us with that. I understand it's a celebratory time. Everybody's excited. It's a, a magnificent victory over the Philistine, but it's because God gave the victory. The, the women of Israel here are mistaken. They're ascribing to Saul thousands. They're ascribing to David ten thousands. They should be ascribing glory to God. God gave the victory. But they're seeing the same way that Saul sees. Saul was seeing through human eyes. Goliath was seeing through human eyes. And now so many of the people in the nation all around, they're seeing with human eyes. Well, it's because where did the victory come from? Because David is a mighty, you know, he's a mighty hero. The reason that there's a victory is because God delivered to what David said. Go back and hear what David said. And let's be careful what we say. Let's be careful what we think. And remember that it is God God who gives the victory. And all the human leaders we have, we give praise for good leaders, but it is God who gives the victory. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, help us to not lose our way. Help us to not ascribe the victory to, uh, to brilliancy, human brilliancy. It's all nothing, Lord. It's all dirt compared to your, your might, your glory, your goodness. Thank you for delivering Israel and Lord, help us not to think the world's way and look to human heroes. We need to look to you as our divine protector. Thank you for hearing our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So God be with you today.